are those who have who are spiritually fatigued. I said the, the another Hebrew word for weary is fatigued. They just they've just run out of gas. They have run out of steam. And they are the ones who will tell you they're weary. Now, one of the things about the church, and I want you to read Eugene Robinson's book, The Splinter, um, yeah, Disintegration, The Splintering of Black America. I want you to read that. Because one of the things that I've come to see, and I, I, for about a year I was back as an interim pastor of a black church, and I have come to see that we are in such deep trouble as it comes to the class divide and as it comes to as it comes to the misunderstanding of what the church is, that we are in such a deep trouble that we don't even understand how deep it is. Because we are not willing to accept the fact that well let me, let me back up and put it this way. One of the greatest challenges that I see now is in terms of this class divide is if you get a handful of so called accomplish the Negroes in the church oh, and then get the rest of them be kind of blue collar. Yeah. The blue collar Negroes start looking up to the others, up, up to that handful of so-called elites as the word of God. By my you go, you run into it when you go into these small communities where so and so is a principal, so and so is a doctor, so and so is a lawyer. Yeah. You will run into these issues of where the other people look up look to those handful of people as though they they trust what they say more than they will what God says. preach the word of God to them, they, they will go and test it out and say, well, is that, do you believe that? Now you've got to have the courage and the audacity to be a teacher and preacher of this word and not back off and believe with conviction what the prophet and what the teacher of the word says, that all flesh is grass. And the grass withers in the 40th chapter. The flower fades. Don't you let people get caught up in their, in their phony understandings of reality. In their pseudo understandings of reality. Or in their, in their dress and appearance. One of the reasons we can't attract the masses in our churches is we overdress. We put the emphasis. We put the emphasis on the outer garment. But the prophet in the 40th chapter of Isaiah makes it very clear to the post-Babylonian captives. He, he says, "The grass withers, the flower fadeth." It's not out there, young man. This is, 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 is in here. You got to work, work work with that concept in here. And that's what you got to help your people to do when they get to staring out the window and looking off places. you got to help them to struggle with it. That is in his. When he says the grass withers and the flower faded, you can see the grass. You can see the flower. You can see the changing of the seed. But he says the word of the Lord. You can't see God's word. God's word is invisible. And that's your power. Your power is in the invisibility of God's word. The word of the Lord endures forever. He said, young men, young men will run. And they'll grow weary. Yes, they will. They'll grow weary. They think they're strength. They think their strength will last forever. Because they don't understand the power and the endurance of God's word. But when you live long enough, and when you walk with it long enough, you will understand that his, his word is everlasting. And his word gives enduring strength forever. Even when you faint. Yeah. Even when you grow weary, yes, even when you don't feel like going, yes, you will hear him say, 
Get up. Get up. Get up. You hear him say, walk together, you. Walk together, you. Don't you get weary. There's a great camp meeting in the promised land. That's a word. That's a word. Did you hear it when you were children? Did they teach it to you when you were little girls and boys? And you now remember, you got to go out and teach it to another generation. You got to teach it to Baby Show, Ray Ray and all of them, Pookie and all of them. Tell them that the word of God endures forever. Oh, they might think they have it now, but oh no. The day will come. The day will come. When you will come to see that the grass does good. The flower does speak. And he says, let's look at what he says. He says, all flesh, all flesh is grass. You tell Marilyn, you tell, you tell uh, Madame that all flesh is grass. That all your other idols, sex idols, male and female, tell them all flesh is grass. Tell your great athletes that all flesh is grass. I remember as a youngster, Muhammad Ali, I, we, are near the, we were around the same age. I remember when he was in his prime. And I remember when he was un, well, pra practically unbeaten. Yes, sir. I mean, he was just an incredible phenomenon and, 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 and specimen in the ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now I look at him and the champ is just a shadow of a champ. All flesh. All flesh. All flesh. It's grass. That's your job. Your job is not to build mega churches. Your job is to teach. Your job is to teach. Now you can teach in a mega church, but your job is to teach. Your job is, I don't care what size the church is, your job is to teach. The weary. Have a word for the weary, he said, in season. In season. That's, it. That's it. That's it. When they get mad with you, yeah. still preach. Yeah. When they curse you out, yeah. preach. Yeah. When they won't give you a raise, preach. Yeah. Because that's your job, is to preach. Yeah. And look at what he says. He says, and this is the beauty of it. You look good now. This is the beauty of it. Look, look here. He said, he gives me the word. He, he tells me how to do it in, how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. And look at this. He waketh morning by morning. Morning by morning. He waketh morning by morning. He waketh my ear to hear as the learned. I gotta go to my seat now. My God, if you missed this, if you missed this, you, I have to, I, I, please don't go away from here and miss this. Did you hear me? I want you to, I want you to check your tongue out. That's a matter of But check out your tongue. And I want you to check out what's up. Check out your ear and remember that great teachers and great preachers are not one dimensional. You don't just have the gift of tongue. The tongue can't get in sync without the gift of
you love my wife and I. And one of the great things, and I'm, I'm about to finish now, but one of the great things that fascinated me there was, I said, we need to, we're going to start a noonday ministry. At most churches, we have noonday ministries. Therefore, just old folks who retired, they could come out and, and do it. They put the same people to come on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, we need to bring in these people who walk by here. Yeah. That's good. That you don't talk to. That's that good. we don't talk to. And we started bringing them in, and they started, those inside started frustrating. Oh, you stick it. Yeah, you do too. We do too. The only difference in them and us is we bathe every day. I sum up, sir, most of us. <laughs> they just don't have a lot of time to bathe. They sleep out of them. And I told them, I said, you know, they, they, they don't smell any worse than we do. You just come in here four or five days without bathing, and we, we, we'll, get the, we'll get the litmus test on you too. <laughs> but within a couple of weeks, we were having as many as 200 people, wow. over, more than 200, in the dining room for the teaching of the word and the, and the, and the uh, eating. And some of the critics said, ah, oh, no, they just come here to eat. They ain't, no, they don't. They ain't stuck by the Bible study. They just come here to eat. So I went to them and the deacon said, well, ask them what would they like to do, Pastor? Would they like to eat first or hear the word first? And they said, they voted to hear the word first. And I said to those on go Sunday morning, Weary children. They didn't know how weary they were. See, they come on Sunday morning. They, they ride up at these cars, pretty cars, et cetera, et cetera. They didn't realize how weary they were because they thought they were better than the people we feed at noon and have a Bible study for at noon. But here's what I said to them, the ones who come on Sunday morning, the, the weary children of Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. I said to them, you know what? I get more inspiration and I hear more about God from these people that we call homeless than I hear from you yeah. from Sunday yeah, yeah, yeah. Morning by morning he wakens my ear. He refreshes me daily to hear the cries and the needs of the weary. I'm glad as I go to my seat that I had, I heard the tongues of the learned I was a land. And they kept challenging me and reminding me that he gives power to the faint. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And to them that have no might, mm -hmm. he increases their strength. And they told me something else. They said, and this is the crescendo of the prophet's faith. And it's the crescendo of my faith. They said, they that wait yes. Yes. upon the Lord yes. shall renew their strength. Yes. Those are the words of the teacher. Yes. Shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That if you've been in a fainting disposition in the last 24 hours, wait, I say. Wait, wait, wait. 